What's going on, y'all? I am so mad that the Soul Train Awards are on at the same time as Real Housewives and Married to Madison. Y'all know I got to get these two reviews out first. And yes, I will be watching the Soul Train Awards. I might speak on them. But from what I'm seeing on Twitter, I got to stay off of fucking Twitter because y'all saying that the shit is already good. You know, Cisco out here performing thong song and shit, bitch. I'm mad. I'm so mad because I went to last week with y'all. But um, anyway... I hope you guys had a good, um, you know, holiday and all that stuff. I hope you guys were safe. I hope you guys, you know, didn't get too, too, too gluttony, okay? Bitch, I lost two pounds, two more pounds this week. <laughs> you know, slowly but surely I'm getting there. But anyway, let's get into this video. So, Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 9, Episode 4. Um, What is this called? A, another Spin Around the Block. So we start off with Cynthia and her daughter Noelle out there playing tennis and then, you know, she take a break and she's telling her daughter that, you know, I got to go out to L.A. for some new line that she got, cargo line or some shit like that. And she's going to see Noelle's father, okay, Leon. And then, you know, Noelle was like, girl, listen, since we going out there and you want me to go out there anyway, I think we should start looking at some colleges out there because I want to go to college out there. She was like, girl, that's too far. She was like, I know, and that's the whole point. <laughs> Noelle is like, I spent all these years with you, okay? I'm ready to break free and do my own thing in the next couple of years. You know, ain't nothing wrong with just going on little college tours and looking and getting your options and all that stuff. But, you know, um, Cynthia and her was having a conversation about this new line that she got and she wants... Um, Noelle to be the face of her line because she know that Noelle wants to be, do something in modeling. You know, she's not exactly tall, but, you know, she already got an advantage because Cynthia, you know, is a model and therefore you have a little end in it. So that was cute. Then we get another mommy daughter son moment with um, Sheree. She's in her condo. Okay. And Cairo comes up in that child Cairo. Cairo then grew up. Cairo then grew up, you know, and, um, He's in uh, college, and he's about to transfer to, uh, transfer to more house, you know, and the little girl, Kelly, she didn't grew up, too, coming there, and Sheree sits down and talking to them, saying how, um, she said, I got some news for y'all, like, she about to tell them that Chateau with Sheree is ready to move in, she said it's almost ready to move in, I said, girl, don't tell me no news like this until it's officially done, okay, and, um, Cairo thing is, so you wait until now when I'm not even going to be here because I'm going to be living on the dorms or whatever to tell me about the house being ready. And she was like, well, I wish it could have been done years ago if you had the cash, bitch. Then we go through her little, um, thing about how, uh, back in the day, Bob was supposed to pay for the upkeep and the mortgage on the house that they were in, but he wouldn't. So they had to go to this condo. It's a cramped three bedroom condo. And, you know, she's just doing it and figuring it out on her own and uh kelly asked is bob coming in there with them she was like you know he still got a lot of work to do and she was just saying how he has yet to apologize for the infidelities and things that he's done and so they're on good terms but they ain't right there yet um candy goes over to mama joyce house first of all I was like, Mama Joyce, get a regular can opener if you can't fix the, um, you know, technical shit with old people. It just don't work, okay? All this new electronic shit. She trying to open up the cat food. It's not working right. The shit keeps stopping. I said, bitch, go and get that dollar uh, can opener and just twist and turn like we did back in the day, bitch, okay? And then Candy knocking on the door. I said, that's a big-ass house. Why y'all don't ever bring the doorbells on these big-ass houses? Because that's how you know this shit is set up, all right? Okay? That's like, at this time, your daughter or so-and-so is going to come. So be in this vicinity so you can hear it all right that's what that was but they had this conversation about um she told her because you know she was like you know grandparents act like they don't want to um uh she don't want to <laughs> babysit kids or whatever shit mama um what's her name mama joy said is you gonna pay me you gonna put me on the payroll <laughs> i said wait a minute she sound like my grandma because that's exactly what my grandma said when my little sister was um born or whatever she said first of all i'm not gonna babysit get that straight but guess what she's done and my sister's about to turn 13 she's babysat and she take her to and from school because we all be at work and or other places so we can't get her you know but like Mama Joyce said, are you going to put me on payroll? 
We put our own payroll, okay? She get her little cash, or she ain't going to do it. I said, Grandma, you trifling. But I understand the hustle, baby. I understand, okay? Using up your gas to come do shit. All right, get that coin, lady. But um, anyway, so she was talking about Riley. The conversation comes up about Riley and about Block and how, you know, Block's girlfriend, Chris Kelly, came out there talking to her, um, how she told Riley what she said and um, all this stuff. And, you know, we saw what Riley said. And Candy whole thing is, I'm not going to force the situation. She's at a point where she can make the decision her own self, but she's not going to tell her to sway her anyway. You know, not going to say, well, you need to do this or no, nah, I don't want you doing this or doing that. She's letting her make the decision herself. She's not really stepping in and causing any trouble, whatever. And I understand that, you know, her feelings has to be hurt because as she was saying, this man is financially stable. You are financially able to, you know, pay for your child and you have yet to pay child support. As Mama D, uh, Mama Joy said, he owe $50,000 in child support, okay? I would have called up there to the radio station and said, child support, child support. Get that man a LLC, okay? Either a lien or what, what else was the other thing that she said? A license or cash? Because she said, do you want your lien on the house or do you want your license suspended? Or give me the goddamn cash, bitch. But it shocked me that Candy said, you know, it's not about the money. It's about him being there for the child. And I honestly agree with her. Like, you literally are fit. You, you're you not there physically and you're not there financially. So what the fuck are you doing? And you got your goddamn nurse to say that you're not going to reach out to the child. It's not your responsibility. What else do you fucking do? And you with TDE? Come on now. Ain't that Jeezy now? Listen, you a prominent fucking known producer and you out here being a deadbeat and you putting your motherfucking business on TV like that? You're dumb as shit, okay? I'm just not here for it. I said, Candy was about to start crying again. I said, could y'all turn to the next thing? I don't need this right now. So, Kenya and uh, Phaedra meet up and, you know, like uh, Phaedra said, it's too many damn P's and shit up in these damn names and stuff. I keep on getting the fucking confused. But, you know, hell must be real frosty because they actually kind of getting along now. And to be quite honest, I'm not even going to hate on the fact that they're, you know, getting cool and everything because it's about time. Like, we're tired of seeing the back and forth, the shade. I mean, they throw shade here and there, but you can tell that it's not malicious or, you know, they're not trying to hurt each other. It's cute, whatever. I like it, okay? And, you know, speaking of shade, um, Phaedra brings up something about Portia or whatever, you know, having fun at the little mystery room that they had or whatever. And here go Kenya talking about some, I mean, we was cool or whatever, but it was only two smart people. We only had two other smart people in there. She was like, well, you and, um, what's her name, Portia? She was like, no, me and Cynthia. And I'm just sitting here like. We get it, okay? Everybody want to say the girl's dumb or whatever. She got her dumb moments. Let's not act like the girl is just illiterate, retarded, you know, no offense, or, you know, just slow as all hell. She has her dumb moments just like everybody has their dumb moments. Let's be quite honest because I have a whole bunch of them on here. You know, y'all didn't have some too. She didn't had a few, all right? We just so happen to see them publicly, okay? But, you know, for her to keep on shading her, she was like, I thought this was supposed to be, you know, where she talks to us about her and her anger management classes and all this stuff. Girl, she got to explain everything to you. She said she taking the class. She taking the goddamn class and all this stuff. And once again, you want to be overly... See, this is the part about King that I can't stand. You want to be overly dramatic about, oh, so she don't... um With her violent tendencies and all this stuff. And I'm just sitting here like, girl, you from fucking Detroit choice so you mean to tell me you ain't never whoop a bitch ass or get into a fight you can't look me dead in my face and tell me no such okay you cannot look me dead in my face and tell me no such because bitch i done been in a fight too all right i done whooped the bitch ass too okay but i still know how to act in public and stuff you know you argue with bitches in public and shit so what does that say about you you provoke bitches to whoop your ass so what does that say about you come on like she can move on from that you move on give the bitch a chance but eventually she was like you know I understand, and I saw a little bit of something, something, and it was cool, but what she, and I'm sitting here like, girl, quit shading that bitch and go on to Sheree, because Sheree is the one that you need to look out for, okay? Yeah, I remember when Sheree went over there and grabbed uh, Kim Wig and went like, <laughs> anyway, so she was talking about that, and 
you know, um, Phaedra, of course, was like, so what happened with that? I heard y'all got into it. What happened with that? She was like, you know, she got offended. She said, because you called her a bitch. She said, no. What I said was, I don't like when bitches come into my house talking shit about me. I didn't call her a bitch. She was like, well, girl, what is it then? Because I'm sitting here like, Kenya, technically you did. And she was like, no, I'm generalizing and all this stuff. And I said, but you talking to her. So basically you called her a bitch, but I get what you're trying to say. You're trying to flip it, you know. But technically you called her a bitch in the inner right, uh, uh, around the way type of uh, thing, okay. But um, with all that bullshit that's going on, uh, Phaedra brings up this thing saying that she's about to start this camp or something in conjunction with the um, YMCA um, dealing with the children of Michigan with the Flint, Michigan crisis, with the water crisis that's still fucking it pisses me off when I talk and, 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 and see stuff like this with all the bullshit that's going on in this world the simple stuff that's going on in our own fucking backyard cannot get fixed but we want to go overseas and help everybody else but we can't even give the people of fucking Flint, Michigan fucking clean water to drink this going on years over two years that these people still don't have good water, okay? You know, and they being stingy with the um, rationing out the water bottles and stuff like that. And some neighborhoods really ain't getting none. You know what that equates to and boils down to. Y'all know. And I'm just sitting here like, that's disgusting and shit. But I still like the fact that Phaedra, you know, she want to do something and she wants to involve Kenya because she is from Michigan. And Kenya wants to be there and teach them how to dance and, you know, teach them some etiquette and stuff and being ladylike or whatever. That's cool. That's nice. At least you're doing your part with something, you know. Um, child, Phaedra said with all of this stuff that was going on, she said, you know, I've learned to like, um, I can't take, regardless of what's been going on between me and her, I can't take away any of Kenya's uh, accomplishments, okay? She, she got the title of Miss Something Important. I said, you know what? See, that little shade that they be throwing in the confessions toward each other, I don't get offended by it because, you know, they trying. But I don't expect them to be so goody-goody with each other, like, off the bat like that. Because that would be fake as shit to me, if you ask me. You still got to have your little quips here and there. You know, I can't wait till one day Portia and King probably get on that level. Well, we know that the shade is there, but it's not maliciously there. But, you know, it is what it is. And then, here comes Sheree going out with Bob. She going to meet Bob at a Chinese place or, you know, uh, Asian food place. I don't know which one. Asian cuisine. And... She was like, you see me in all of this, and this nigga pops up in a goddamn sweatshirt. And I'm sitting here like, I need to see a before picture of Bob, because Bob, I just don't get how they got together. I mean, Sheree, was it the money that you see, or whatever, because I just don't see it. Like, you look too good. Look-wise, you look so much better, so much more for him. But, you know, looks ain't everything. Maybe it was the personality or something. I hope it was something like that. He just so goofy and shit, and, you know, he finally went on ahead and admitted that he was sorry for the infidelities and, you know, being immature and all that stuff, and they just, you know, came to a conclusion, I guess, an agreement and a thank you and all that stuff, and, of course, he's still trying to get back in her drawers. I like that glitter on your chest. I'm trying to get into that glitter. She like, nigga, let's fucking go get some chicken. Nigga. So, Phaedra had invited all the girls to go laser tag to get all their frustrations out so they can all start anew, get this bullshit out the way. I thought it was a pretty good idea. Because, to be quite honest, regardless of the drama that does happen when they do certain stuff, I do like it when all other ladies get together and they do start off being cool and cordial and having fun. It's just sometimes down into the end of the shit shit just go awry, but in the beginning, it be all nice, and I love that part about them, but, um, you know, I guess it's the mature side of me just coming out, because, you know, I just like when they don't fight so much and be so fucking petty with each other, but it's all to the good, you know, it's entertainment, and they was having fun, and of course, everybody was there before, um, Kenya and Mallory, bitch, Kenya brought Mallory, okay, and I forget that they was kind of cool, because, you know, Kenya is cool with Cynthia, and Sheree was just back there talking about something. You know what? Yeah, I can't wait, you know, so I can shoot some bitches and all that stuff. You know which ones I'm looking for. I'm looking for that bitch, okay? And as soon as Kenya pop up and she sit down, they waiting, they about to go get strapped up and everything. She was like, come on, let's go so I can go shoot some bitches. And then Kenya, they, they, 
the way they edited it made it seem as if Kenya heard what she said and knew that she was talking about her or whatever. So Kenya was looking like, bitch, I wish you would, <laughs> you know, like, come on. But they was just going in. They did a free for all, no teams or whatever. And, you know, people was just shooting, having fun. It was, it was, it was a nice time. Okay. For the moment. All right. Then we switch and we go to California where Cynthia's getting ready, getting Noel ready for her little fashion thing. Um, the launch of her cargo line is the bag line and sunglasses, all this stuff. Leon meets them there. We see all these people there, press and, you know, Noelle complained about she's hungry, her feet hurt. Cynthia like, girl, your feet hurt and mine do too. Me, I said, you used to your feet hurting, okay, but she ain't. But um, Noelle, get your ass up and go do your job, okay? That's what you got to do. And I was like, I mean, this is the life that you wanted to do, Noelle, so you got to get used to this shit, Okay. Feed her, blistered up, all that shit. You're going to have to, that's the sacrifice you got to make. But let me tell y'all something. I don't know what it is about Leon, but Leon still looks the goddamn same, okay? The same shit. I'm finna go look at the five heartbeats in a minute, okay? And then wait to fucking exhale. Like, you know, the nigga just, he got a little more weight on him, but he still looked the damn same, and he looks good, okay? I was like, all right, Leon. Cynthia, go back to him. <laughs> So, all the women, they're sitting down at the table finally, and, you know, um, Phaedra brings up her, the reason why she brought them there, you know, she wants to do this camp, and she wants to raise money for the camp for the kids that were, you know, affected, are affected by the Flint water crisis and everything, and she was like, you know, I want to get out there and sell some stuff, raise some money, you know, Lena, you got your boutique, you can put your stuff out there, Kenya, you do your hair product, you can bring it out there, if it don't work on people, I heard it work on pets, we can do that shit, Candy, you can bring your bedroom, Candy, bitch, when she said that shit about the pets, Sheree said, well, shit, I could have got some for Max, okay, because he a dog and all that stuff, Sheree stood up, and then, you know, she was like, Candy, you can do, you can bring your bedroom candy, because I know you got a whole bunch, and she was like, you know it, and then Portia said, so we selling dicks and sex toys to the kids? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing <laughs> a little bit, but it just made me laugh for some reason. And then, you know, it was like, Portia, you could bring your neck and hair and all that stuff. And then somehow it got on the situation that was going on between, you know, Kenya and uh, Sheree, the mess that happened. You know, Kenya was like, I heard Mallory told me that you, you know, was still talking mess about me. Next thing you know, she was like, I want to say shit about you. She King was like, I left it back there. At the um, mystery room, when I left, when I walked away, bitch, you didn't walk away. You jogged away. You skipped away. You did this and you did that. And I was, I was like, okay, okay, whatever. And I just knew they was going to go full, full, full throttle, okay? And Kenya started talking about, you know, her house and, you know, calling her a hoe. And she was like, because first Sheree called her a bitch. And she was like, oh, so now you going to call me a bitch? She was like, well, bitch, you call me a bitch, bitch, okay? What you going to do, bitch? Man, Sheree must have said bitch in one sentence like ten times, okay? And it was like, oh, but then you going to call me a hoe and this a hoe that. And, bitch, we know you all a hoe and all this stuff. Sheree in the uh, fashion like, you know, spreading that twat all over and still ain't got nothing out of it. And I agree with Candy. When it comes to this whole situation, they need to just let that shit go and stop calling each other that because it's a tricky topic, you know, because just about all y'all niggas, all y'all bitches didn't been hoes before, okay? Let's be quite honest. And to be to be fair, to even come and think of it, I'm not going to call none of them hoes because I don't know who the fuck y'all be fucking around with. You know, if you hear the word hoe or bitch slip out my mouth, I ain't calling them a hoe on like, you know, they fucking around or whatever. That's just a placeholder or whatever because I don't want to call them a woman or a chick or whatever, you know, it just... Flows better out my mouth. I know that probably didn't make sense, but it made sense to me. So, you know, we'll rock with it. Okay, but anyway, do I think any of these women are hoes? No. Do I think they bitches? No. Do I think they can act like a bitch? Hell yes. We can all agree on that. But, you know, they be so easy. Like, everybody got a background. Even you, can you? I mean, people can assume that you a little hoe-ish or whatever because you did videos back in the day. Like, using, you know, rappers' videos and stuff, and they always had that stigma that, you know, these video girls fuck around. Am I going to say that about you? No, but can somebody else assume that? Yeah, so y'all need to both just stop, you know, throwing that whole situation around. And then, Sheree, the fuck you got with Bob for? Okay, that looks just like 
groupy shit or money shifts me. But anyway, we're not going to go there. We are, y'all just stop that shit. And then they start talking about houses. Oh, four of your houses can fit in my house and all this stuff. Bitch, Candy sat there and started eating. She was like, I mean, I was tired of them talking all this shit. So I just got home. I just started eating to make me feel better. And then all of a sudden, Kenya said, no, they was like, you look stupid. No, you look stupid, you fucking bitch. No, you a bitch, okay? We're sitting there with your mama Joyce, old ass mama Joyce wig on. Bitch, at that moment in time, Candy had zoned out and came right back into the middle of this conversation and said, bitch, hold the fuck up. What you won't do is talk about my mama. She's like, girl, I ain't talking about your mama. But technically, Kenya, you could have just said your old ass lady hair looking like. That's what you could have said. You ain't have to say Mama Joyce, even though we was all kind of thinking the same thing. That's your girl right there next to you. You know, you ain't got no issues with her, so don't bring the mama into it. You know, just say you got that old lady looking wig on or whatever. Candy was about to go from zero to ten and then right then and there, okay? Because she was like, don't put your motherfucking hand in my face. And then she kind of backed down and went back to eating. I was sitting here like, this is trash, but it's good. And Phaedra was like, okay, y'all, I just want everybody to come together, put our pettiness aside, and, you know, you know, get this shit going. And, of course, King was like, yeah, I will be there with bells on top and all this stuff. And then she was, um, Sheree was like, I don't have to like the bitch to um, be able to be cordial and work around the bitch. <laughs> I said, okay, well, you do what you got to do, okay? Shut up. So Cynthia, Leon, and um, Noelle, they sitting down having dinner with one another. And then Noelle has to go because she's going to a concert. But then they had this conversation with one another about um, what's going on between her and Peter. You know, I just love the relationship between Cynthia and um, Leon. You can kind of tell that they were kind of cool before they actually got into a relationship because they're still cool now. That's what it seemed like. And for me, looking at Peter and her marriage... It don't seem like it's on that level. And even, you know, Cynthia said that, you know, she wished she had the type of relationship that she had with Leon with Peter. I felt as if she would have given him more time. Maybe they could have got there and understood each other a little bit more. And just like Peter, um, we kind of find out no one was really here for this marriage, okay? We knew the mother wasn't here. We knew the um, sister wasn't here for it because they hit the marriage license. Nene wasn't here for it as, you know, they um showed the clip previously of what happened uh, seasons ago. And then ne uh, Le Neon, Leon, Leon said that it felt rushed. And when y'all had the wedding, I had to leave early because it was just too much shit that was going on. And, of course, she got in her feelings and crying and all that stuff. And he was there to comfort her because she was like, she don't know what the next phase of her life is going to be. I said, y'all just need to stop fucking around and get right back together, okay? Because y'all work and it's cute. So, Candy go over there to pick up my mama to take her to go get her nails done for babysitting Ace. And then, you know, um, here go Joyce. <laughs> Candy, guess what? What, mama? I like wine, you know? And it was like, what it is? That sweet wine. What is it called? That Moscato? My friend said, I don't need to be on that shit because they said when I get on that Moscato, I kind of read people, okay? I said, bitch, you like that cheap ass Moscato? Moscato is cheap as shit, okay? Moscato is an adult version of wine cool, okay? Wine coolers are young adults, starter fucking drinks, and, you know, Moscato is just a bigger bottle of a wine cooler, okay? A kid is like, Bobby, y'all need to be on that shit because you read anybody, period. But then at this moment, who calls? Block want to call talking about some, you know, I want to um talk to Riley. She was like, okay, you can talk to her. All you got to do is call her phone. And she was like, I want to sit down and talk to you. I'm sitting here like, uh, uh, now we want to talk. Okay. He called and talking about some, you know, he don't want there to be no bad blood and so we can co-parent. And um, Candy, like, how you going to co-parent a 14-year-old that you never co-parented before? And I get where she coming from. But in that whole conversation, you can tell that, you know, she was just over it. And once again, you can see that she's not blocking him from coming and talking to his own child. Okay? She's leaving it to Riley. And I know some people might be like, well, she the parent and all that stuff and she should make. No. If Riley don't want to answer the phone, you can't force somebody to do something when they're almost a fucking teenage. They're a teenager and shit like that. Like, come on. You, you over here 
acting like you can't get your ass up and just come over or you can't pick up the phone and call your child and then go online and say that don't nobody be answering his phone calls. And I'm like, well, she just answered the phone call now. I don't give a damn if Cameron's was there or not because according to Candy, all this shit, this was a pop-up shit. Block knew he was going to be on here, but Candy didn't know that this shit was going to be on here, okay? And so um, when this shit happened... You know, Mama Jess is like, <laughs> co-parent. How you gonna co-parent? Where's that $50,000 that you need? And he was like, what's that? She said, you know what? Don't even worry about it. And he was like, I'm not finna chase y'all. I'm not finna chase y'all. And I was like, so wait a minute. You're not gonna chase your daughter. You're supposed to be chasing your child. Okay, it's your fucking responsibility to get this shit right. And then you can't be talking about some we treat you a certain way when you haven't been in your child's life or whatever. All the shit that he was doing was making excuses and he can't own up to his own faults. And that's what it was. And of course, Candy, she breaks down and cries, which was very much deserved because he was just a dumbass. But anyway, you know... I feel for you women who have ignorant baby fathers like that. And I feel for you men who got ignorant baby mamas too. Okay. It, it's just a vicious cycle that really needs to quit. But y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode. And I will see y'all later for Married to Medicine. And um, I need to hurry up and get through with this because I want to look at the soda.